Hello everybody and uh, well, okay, it sounds working. Uh, hello everybody and welcome to the final round of the SA Chess Online uh, well Olympiad Selection Tournament. The open section and the team section. Those are the two the two sections I'm looking at. And then in the final round, actually some of the games have been played in the open section. I mean, uh, Nachi and the Real Frenchie have finished their games as well as Masia against Duji. Um, uh, who's Duji again? Uh, I can't remember now. I can, I can go check. Uh, but in any case, uh, so I'm thinking they they wanted to be done for the Corona Chess or Team Battle or something. These two usually play the Frenchie and the Nachi. In any case, um, then we will be looking at these games starting at 4. They still haven't updated uh, the, the final rankings and stuff. And I haven't tallied the scores myself. Um, but uh, I will add, probably try and see if I can add that to each video. Maybe I'll be too lazy and I won't do that. In any case, that's the open section. And then uh, let's move on to the under 20s. Uh, their final round is also starting now, but uh, not sure. So their stuff, okay, I just haven't refreshed. And uh, Kanya and the Wolf are playing. And I think this is a big game if uh, Kanya wants to still stand a chance. Uh, let's just go to start with that game. I think uh, in the under 20s. Let's see. The guy that wins, Devon, is already playing against Vusi. Uh, Floppy the dog. Uh, Paul Gluckman. Sorry, my face is in the way. Let's just move me up or the screen up. And uh, this is also a good game. And let's the Benelli and Keith we've got already. Uh, dry pen, chess king, Mark. And uh, Crazy Castle. Don't know if he's playing. Let's see if he's playing in the final round. If he's got a buy, maybe. Trophy Master is the only one with a buy. This should be one, two, three, four, five, six games. I've got one. Okay, two, three, four, five games. And then I'm missing someone. It's uh, probably Panda Bird. Yeah, it's Panda Bird that I'm missing. Let me just, uh, sorry, add them. And then that's the final round. Uh, this has been such a fun event. Um, oh, come on, let me just, uh, I need to add Panda Bird, right? And then we can start. Sorry, they start a minute before the time. So usually when I'm setting up, I, I think uh, I'll have time to set up. And then I see some of the games starting, so I... It's Yaduvir Gavandir. Okay, so there are six games in the juniors happening. The standings in the juniors section, uh, if you guys want to see it. After round uh, 12 should be Banele with 9.5. Remember, he's lost. The guy that wins, Devin Smith, out of nowhere with 9 points. The guy uh, that's got a uh, buy now is Mr. Trophy Master. So everyone playing still, I think, has a shot. Wait, let's see uh, what's happening. Oh. Kanya on 8, so he can try and play for 2nd place still, if uh, Keith or um, uh, Devon uh, mess up. But Nele should, uh, if he loses then he's also out of it, but uh, so the, the under 20s are really interesting because uh, at least I know what's happening with uh, the team points in the end. So uh, Kanya, has he started playing? And uh, Devon is playing against Vusi, if he, he really needs to play for a win. If he wants to try and catch Banele. Banele against Paul Gluckman. Gluckman needs to take down Banele as well. If, uh, if this is going to be interesting as a spectator. Um, just hold on. Okay, um, okay, but uh, let's jump to the open section before we get uh, to all the under 20 games. In the open section, we've got Kenny Willenberg playing his final round against Peaceful Warrior 1. And he got an isolated deep on. Let's see if anything happens there. But I think this round is going to fly by. People are, are tired. They've played so many games. Um, makes sense that some of the open section players arranged for it to be over a bit uh, more quickly because uh, playing so much chess uh, the quality goes down 
uh, you start hating the game. Look at these two. They just made a draw. They're done with this tournament, fine with their results, and ready to go do something else. Ready to go play more chess. <laughs> Supremacy Blitz and Craig Willenberg. Craig Willenberg with the white pieces. Uh, this looks like a, a Roy Lopez or a Scotch or something. Yeah, Roy Lopez uh, with d4. And now bishop d5. Charles de Villiers, uh, this man, he's been uh, playing really well. Um, I don't know what his results are at the moment. Playing now against the Sneaky Weasel. And there's potential to also isolate his deep on. He might recapture with the knight to prevent that and to keep the possibility open uh, for his bishop to have an open diagonal. So this game also needs uh, something to happen before I as an amateur commentator can say anything interesting. It just uh, seems pretty natural for both sides. Uh, nothing, nothing weird going on. Okay. Now we've got, uh, actually this could be a big game, if, uh, I don't know how's Bramos, uh, how his results have been throughout the tournament, but uh, he, he's playing against Roland Poseidon right now with, uh, Roland with white pieces, and I might prefer Roland slightly, he's setting up some interesting ideas to recapture the e5 pawn. And to invade Black's position, because I mean, some something like Knight B4 would drop to pieces, but uh, there's something, something about the Knight being able to go to B6 that I also kind of like, and the fact that it can be backed up by a Knight going to C4. Okay, so uh, Roland looking quite good, I like his position. Also, there's some pressure over here. You can switch his plans, could just go for the A pawn. And then he's materially fine. Um, Johannes Mabusela with the black pieces uh, needs to figure out what to do. Kanya and Keith. Uh, the game starts. And we have D4, D5. We did not see a lot of D4, D5 today uh, with Queen's Gambit. So Kanya is playing for the win. This guy is not uh, going to mess around. He needs the win if he wants to qualify for second or third place. I think he's, even with a win, there's no chance Kanya is getting first. But if he wants to qualify, this is his game. And he needs to prove a point right now. That he deserves to be in the team. Devon, however, actually has... A minuscule chance of uh, of making it uh, into into the first place if a Banele draws or loses, he needs to win this game. And Vundla there in the comment section saying if uh, Vuzi wins this game, if a Devon loses now, then Keith is back in the running for second place. But I think that would that would still mean Keith would need to take down. Uh, Kanya. Or I think if if uh, I think maybe if they they want uh, results, then Keith and Kanya can maybe draw something like that. Then Kanya can't get a place. But uh, then if they take if uh, Devon goes down, Keith only needs a draw. So there's a bit of that dynamic. Kanya offline now. Um, I'm thinking there's going to be, to be honest, I'm thinking there's going to be some politics involved with uh, this last game. I don't think it's going to be that easy. Um... I think there might be some pressure on Devon at the moment to, to lose. So, we should keep an eye out for something interesting. 
I want to I want to make the chat visible because I think people people's opinions now are going to be quite funny. So that is just my feeling. Kakanya is just offline, by the way. And Mawe, to Lefu Lefu Sekarume is saying, "Wolf, please, 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 man." Which I don't know what the reference is to exactly. Please what? Okay. Guy that wins, Devon. Loads of pressure on Devon. And his position is actually not too great. So. Uh, this came from uh, a Roy Lopez. So you'd expect maybe Devon to be more comfortable. But suddenly, Fusi's got F file um, navigation. But I don't know. Um, Fusi sometimes makes soft blunders, so and Devon's more solid than that. Even if he's down like two pawns, uh, seen him swindle stuff. And uh, just now I was saying that the spectator rooms are different depending on who you watch. Is that true? No. I, I barely thought that was true. Let's get back to the open section. We'll. Uh, this game was a draw between Craig and the Peaceful Warrior. Supremacy Blitz seems to have done something strange against uh, Craig Willenberg. Uh, or maybe it's just the line that Craig knows that. King F King F eight is necessary. In any case, uh, Black's got the bishop. Bear. White has got uh, the initiative, though. So let's see how that one trades down. Charles the Villiers and the Sneaky Weasel. Their game has progressed. The Sneaky Weasel has decided to do what I said uh, to isolate the D pawn. After B three simply took. And Charles de Villiers not going for knight takes d4, keeping the pawn structure intact and uh, possibly the diagonal open for the bishop, but has decided to play with the isolated d-pawn as a feature of his position, saying I'm staking out those two squares, I can positionally try and play a pawn break um, to gain some more space. So that's what's uh, happening over there. Now, Roland and uh, Unguni, ach, and um, Johannes Mabusela. In this game, um, we left it after knight to d2. And Mabusela played a rook e8, freeing the queen of her responsibilities. And the pawn has been captured. And I'm not too sure if uh, simply taking the pawn was the best you could do on the queen side. But uh, still definitely preferring white here. These knights are beautiful. Loads of ideas here for Roland Poseidon note. Kanye and Keith, uh, Keith is definitely a theoretician in this line. He knows, he knows what uh, happens where. Devon and Vusi, this is these two games. Kanya's game against Keith and Vusi's game against Devon. It's gonna uh, determine uh, what happens in this entire event to to a few players, uh, whether they stand a chance to win a portion of five thousand Rand. That's uh, pretty much what these two de these two games are determining. Uh, there's 5,000 Rand on the line. I guess uh, we need to see what uh, Banele also gets up to. Oh yeah, he made a draw. So this makes things really, really interesting. He just made a quick draw against uh, David uh, Paul Gluckman. And that means Banele... Let's uh, bring in the... Banele's got 10 points. And uh, 
Devon can still catch up with that if he wins. 10 is not too far away, but so can Keith. This could be a three-way tie if both Devon and Keith win. But if, uh, if uh, Devon just makes a draw, then uh, I think... Uh, then first place is still too far away from him. So Bonella deciding not to push for more, although it was probably a better idea to try and secure his place, but uh, he thinks it's not necessary to risk it at least through losing. He will take the half a point. And meanwhile, Kanya is playing super aggressive chess, and you guys can't see much because I'm not uh, too great with moving this thing around. Okay. Yeah, Kanya played an aggressive move somewhere. And we not I said I wanted to keep the chat in. Oh my word, you guys are gonna kill me for moving this thing around so much. <laughs> Look at the chest, not at the screeny thing. Okay. And what I was saying, oh. Um What did uh, Kanya decide to do with that which was so aggressive? He traded the bishop off the knight to h5 and then g5, knight goes back a trade and suddenly the g-files open. But what does the wolf have in mind? Don't move this knight. Don't move your knight. Just uh, don't, don't do that ever. Hello?
sorry. Uh, okay, you can hear again. It's uh, just uh, birthday greetings. <laughs> That's what that was. Uh, I'm just trying to show you, uh, everyone. <laughs> Let's just open the chat again. Uh, let's just open, not my opinion, but uh, Kanye is playing well. He's totally uh, in the right space to ruin Keith's chances and Keith is going into a, a long and hard thing over, over there. Um, Queen wants to mate, you can't uh, recapture here. Knight enters, can't take the knight, so Keith's position is looking horrible. Glad I don't have the responsibility of playing behind these pieces now, and that I'm just a spectator. Because there's a lot of money involved, and I think he, he might have gone wrong. Um, I, barely, I barely know where, but it already feels kind of wrong. Kanye is still offline. I don't really want to move away from the screen, but we need to know what Devon's up to. And Devon's... Devon is... Uh, uh, Devon's up a piece. Uh, Vusi Blundered a piece here. Didn't blunder a piece. I think he wanted... No, he got his knight trapped. What? Devon's playing really well. He can still lose this, but... Now this means uh, the top two are going to have to have to play for a playoff or something. Uh, Lefu is saying that Black is winning over here. He could be right, right? So um, There's an extra piece, but in the meantime, Vusi has got these two tempos coming and that might win some material back. Actually, this is a tricky position for White. Uh, there's basic ideas in the house. Okay, Vusi, three pawns for the piece. The, this is just... Uh, Devon's going to have to play very, very securely now to put this one in the bag. Rem remember, uh, Devon's on nine, point, nine points. First place, Banele is on ten. So a win over here as White... Uh, would grant him a playoff match, I think. Uh, so, this game, however, Keith has made a move. He's gone e4. Which seems kind of sensible. But even in a line like this, uh, Knight can take. Oh, okay. Keith is maybe quite careful. So, so Knight takes, Knight takes. Fortunately for him, he's just blocking the, di the diagonal, giving himself some freedom. Uh, if he gets this in, he will be very happy. <laughs> if he can move his knight here in one move and have the tempo to do so now, he'll be better, but uh, it's tricky. <sighs> Hello? Yeah?
Okay, sorry. Uh, the audio is working. Uh, this is the end actually of the series, or this part. Actually, on my birthday, so I needed to sit with some birthday wishes. And, uh, okay, the, you guys kind of maybe could gather what I was trying to imply without actually speaking, just with arrows. Uh, it did feel necessary for Devon to give, a w give back the material. Currently, this rook is pinned, so I'm thinking Devon will just uh, defend. And rook c8. Devon is still better. Uh, Vusi is a tricky character, though. You, you cannot ever be sure, though. Like knight e4 now. He will try something like that. I don't know. Um, any case, uh, Keith is struggling. Big time. But they made a quick draw. Um, there's an analysis on. Wait. So we'll, we'll go to the other games now. And there they. Kanya. Great game by Kanya. Okay. Any guess? Um. Let's get to the open section, see what happened. This was a draw. Craig and Supremacy Blitzer, they're still battling it out. Liking Craig still. He's uh, got everything under control. He's getting another pawn. Supremacy Blitz wants to be aggressive and try and open the G file, but I think this might uh, kind of be your final move against Craig, giving him way too much. Charles and uh, the Sneaky Weasel are still going at it. Charles still with this isolated pawn. Not sure how much it's worth anymore. Roland Poseidon out, uh, now down a pawn against uh, Johannes Mabusela. And round about here, I think. He dropped the pawn. <laughs> I don't know if F4 is any good. When suddenly Mabusela had compensation, there were trades, and then I think the Queen's got off, if I was looking at the position correctly just now. Yeah, there. And Black's definitely better. Just like that. Uh, Black resigns here. So Keith goes down. Why uh, are people complaining and not uh, trying to see for themselves whether... So this is kind of theory, I guess. And a6 has been tried in the past. It looks scary generally for black. This is still pretty basic. No, I, you're getting chopped. Oh, 
Okay, so Keith went down. Kanye apparently made a mistake over here. H4. Banelli made a draw quickly, I remember. And, uh, oh, they also made a draw. That means Banelli takes first place. And Devon uh, probably made the draw after he saw Keith go down. And which is bad, I guess. Because of the, they need to replay. Uh, Devon could probably have continued this game, tried for more, could trade queens. Rook, uh, rook takes, now knight takes, rook takes. That's bad. Because uh, then, uh, if uh, that's the case, would Devon be able to play his game? Again, based on the fact that he could um, make a different uh, decision. Okay. Any more games ongoing? Chess King Mark, Dry Pen. Mark went down again. Keegan Agrales took down the Crazy Castle. And I think the, this is a con conclusive of the final round. Oh, we still have Craig Willenberg. And Charles de Villiers in the open section playing, uh, as well as, uh, sorry, <laughs> I was just so fascinated by the under-20s for this round, and all the drama and hype surrounding it, that uh, I barely forgot about the open section and the great players that are playing over here. Johannes Mabusela and Roland Besedenot here with uh, the white pieces down upon, playing with a knight, though. I like I would like a knight in this position just because it feels kind of tricky. Um, feels nice and tricky. What about rook c six? See, this is what I'm. This is what I mean. The knight is. The knight's got some funny, funny things he can do. Oh, Mabusela. Tricky, tricky. But a king and knight, they're going to be attacking now. Let's see, uh, I think uh, Lupus for men, Charles de Villiers, needs to make a move now. He's dropping a pawn, don't get flagged, just make a move. He's dropping a pawn. So finally, the weakness uh, he made earlier, uh, he thought he'd play with a d-pawn. And there he finally loses it. I think you need to trade. Go knight takes. A king takes now. King takes. So that's the issue. And trying to play this rook pawn endgame might be a bit tricky. Uh, black can throw the rook back for now. But you can... I don't know. It's uh, maybe still drawable for white. And even though you're down a pawn. Craig did end up taking down Supremacy Blitz. Moments, I think, after we left. Nice find. And then bishop takes. Great. Check. And tactical moves. And wins the rook. Actually, uh, it's a fork. Craig wins. Uh, Charles is still holding on, but he's he's dropped his second pawn, so I, I guess he'll he's be he'll be going down. And white resigned here. Okay. <laughs> Johannes Mabusela played well. Um, really well. Uh, such a passive pos position the whole game. And then he gets the chance to go. And it's technically uh, well calculated lines. He's up a few pawns. And wins the end game. So the only person still playing really is uh, Charles de Villiers. And this does not look good for him. I don't think he's making a draw. Almost time to throw in the towel. I mean, uh, B3 is coming. Not too many tricks left. There goes your last hope, I think. G5 is also dropping. 
Yeah. White resigns. Final game. So, uh, in the on the 20 section, Banele. And then Devon. Well done to them. I'm not too sure all the results in yet. Let's see if they've updated it. Off around 12, but... Um, Devon with half a point. He's on 9.5. Kanya with 9 and uh, Keith with 9. So I'm not sure who will take the next place. And then I'm not too sure of the rest of the um, results. In any case, so what a good tournament for the under-20s. And I'm not sure about the results for the open section. Um, if they are all in yet. You could maybe just wait a minute to see. Oh, you, you guys aren't seeing what I'm seeing. Um, the results will be uploaded now. But they're still waiting for, I think, weird games like these that haven't been played. So I think they're going to catch up with it. And we will know the results soon. Um, all I know is Holy Cornholia was playing great. But here towards the end... I think Bramos uh, is actually taking taking this one home. He barely went down. Let's just uh, take a look. Bramos took down the Frenchie. Then uh, he ended up taking down Kenny uh, Solomon. That was round two. Great game. And he had a bye. And then Drew Narchi, which is always good. And beat the Sneaky Weasel. Beat Supremacy Blitz. I really think Bramos is taking this home. Drew Masia. Johannes Mabusela. Beat the Peaceful Warrior. So, uh, didn't focus too much on him. I think he still needs to play Hakia. That's one of the issues. And Blackjack. He needs to play Kenny Willenberg too. And Doji. So, it's, it's so tricky to say whether this guy is going to win the tournament or not. But he actually hasn't gone down now that I'm looking at his results. Lupus Foreman. He drew him. Uh, and then he took down Steenkamp just now. We just looked at the game. Brilliant game. And he just took down Roland Poseidon. So he's definitely, uh, I think, in the run for first place. I'm not sure. Uh, except Roland Poseidon, but he just took him down if there's anyone else that had such a good tournament as uh, Johannes Mabusela in the open section. Well done to everyone. Uh, thanks, uh, South Africa, for Chesa, for organizing this nice event. And, uh, well, I'll see you guys soon for more chess videos. And this is concludes, uh, well, the uh, tournament that was 15 games long. 15 hours of my life. <laughs> Anyways, uh, to make uh, it worth it, just go subscribe. And you'll keep up to date when I uh, make new videos and stuff like that. Uh, which I, I am planning on doing, so that's cool. Thank you for watching, and see you guys soon.